Hi, Steve Nichols here with Alex Brown. Uh, we thought we'd uh, take one last opportunity this year to uh, take the reins from Steve Wessling and uh, uh, reflect on the week that was here at Samri. Big week at Samri Research Showcase. Uh, it was good to see everybody kind of kind of pitch in there and some really nice work. Observations, Alex. Yeah, it was real. It's always good to have that every year. Um, good to see the sort of activity across all of the themes. Uh, plan for the next few years is a bit more stuff together. But I think where the themes coalesce is where the action will be. I think it was really telling as you were sitting there and listening to people talk. You're looking at their posters and thinking, "Geez, we could be doing something with that person." So uh, it's a really good opportunity. So hopefully everybody else um, had the same kind of sense and uh, certainly thank you to the research office and everybody else who was uh, important in, in putting that together. None of these meetings uh, just happen by themselves and, and so a lot of people uh, put a lot of work in to do that. So thank you. Um, this week we have uh, National AIDS Day. AIDS, and, World, AIDS, uh, World AIDS, AIDS Day, Day. World AIDS Day, um, and we had um, a launch of a national awareness campaign around HIV and AIDS in the um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island uh, communities. Uh, any comments or thoughts on yeah, that? So, so James and his crew are really, really heavily involved in this, both from a national perspective, but also an international Indigenous perspective. So, we congratulate the team. Wish them all the best. There's lots of work to be done. Uh, go get them, Tigers. So, um, big week here. Um, some sad news to end the week. Uh, we have the departure of uh, um, an important member of our community, Alice Robinson, who uh, you will have all got to meet over the last few months, uh, particularly with a video camera placed right in front of your face, um, is, is from the marketing and communications department, is leaving us. Um, and uh, um, uh, she's had a, an enormous impact in a short time. And I think you'd all agree that uh, um, our ad campaigns look fantastic, our new website looks really good and uh, Alice we wish you all the best uh, in your next uh, uh, journey. Um, some sombre news for the Samri community this week, uh, um, we lost a good friend and member of the Samri community, Nick Antic, late last week. Uh, Nick uh, is a friend to many of us at Samri, um, he is a member of the faculty at Samri uh, was an enormous champion of everything that SAMRI um, is about, about bringing uh, researchers together from throughout, throughout the state um, and you know was, was always there uh, at uh, meetings which was all about talking about the big things that SAMRI was supposed to be about and collaboration. Uh, Nick uh, lost his battle with a, a um, illness uh, and, a, and a long illness uh, and uh, we wanted to just take a few minutes to recognise Nick and his importance to us and uh, um, certainly pass our best wishes on to Corinne and the, the family. Um, um, but the most important thing about Nick and Steve Westling has certainly um, said this before, Nick is, if nothing, one of the world's great sledges um, and uh, one of the world's great kind of watchers of sport and politics and I know he uh, watches these Friday um, videos um, with great amusement. Uh, I, I know he absolutely thinks the best one ever was the one we did on the Olympics and why wouldn't he be? Yeah, um, certainly. certainly um, some, some thoughts? Yeah, look it's always hard. Um, our love goes to the family of course but there are a lot of people who would be affected by losing Nick. Um, he was a great clinician. Um, there'll be lots of lovely things said about Nick and I think most of those will be true. Um, he was a great intellectual. He was a fantastic clinician and a great mentor to a lot of people, particularly junior clinicians. Um, he was a great humanist, which was is really the fundamental drive of medicine and health and what we should be doing in terms of caring for one another. Uh, he was clearly a sports tragic. He had an almost encyclopedic recollection of every obscure sporting event um, known to me. Um, and he would put Bruce McAvaney, um to shame um, now, he would like to think Nick would always consider that he had a rapier wit. I disagree. I think he had more of a chainsaw <laughs> wit. He was a lot more brutal with it than he thought he was. Um, and in, in that note, um, I'll certainly remember all the fun we had, and more than anything else. Now, Nick would um, say enough of that, and let's just get on with the, the sports and the sledging. So maybe we might uh, 
uh, finish our contribution to 2016 with uh, maybe just uh, a few reflections. The last time we had the opportunity to do this together was during your meteoric rise uh, taking over from the, the Westling regime and, and at the time we jokingly referred to the similarities between you and uh, at the time uh, Republican primary candidate Donald Trump. Uh, now look what we are, where we are. Look, look, look at the monster you've created. Um, Trump uh, Arama really is, it's very hard to comprehend. Um, I would certainly not like to consider myself in the same vein as the Trump. Uh, it, was a, it was a fascinating process. I, I can only assume that he lied the whole time and that he was smarter than all of us and he lied his way into the office. But time will tell. Um, he's got a lot to do. Um, he's certainly dollied up to a lot of fairly difficult individuals and positions on a whole bunch of fronts. Let's see if he can uh, run a country. But America will be greater again and it will be tremendous. Let's hope it is. Well, that goes without saying. Let's hope it is. So, um, sport. So we spent a lot of time reflecting on the Olympics last time. So perhaps uh, moving beyond the Olympics, reflecting back on 2016, your, uh, your, your, your big issues you want to talk about? Yes, there's a couple. Uh, I think we've witnessed the, the fall of two of Australia's great sporting codes. We've seen the fall of the Australian cricket time. Oh, I think it's been an absolute debacle. Um, to lose on home soil in the way that we have, with no real mongrel in us, is really disappointing. Um, I think we've seen the fall of the Australian rugby side. This is after a World Cup campaign where we did very well. Uh, obviously, we can play against anyone but New Zealand, and this has to change. So they were probably the two biggest disappointments for me in the year. Uh, rugby league was an interesting year. We had uh, it was sort of the year of the underdog. We had the, the Sharks get up, the Western Bulldogs get up in the AFL. We had some baseball highlights, which I'll leave to you because you're an American sport fanatic, and I actually don't know how to spell most of the teams' names. But it was the year of the underdog. Um, I think we've seen the fall and fall of Nick Kyrgios, a great Australian ambassador. I'll leave it up to you to decide best or worst sledge of all time. Oh, I think the jury's out on that one. Uh, we've seen Canada win the World Curling Championships. I think that's one of my great loves. I'm a fan of, Can of Canada and Canadian sport, particularly. Well, I in particular, the Canadian curling team. Well, I think underrated. Highly underrated. underrated. And, and we are now the world champions, so that we really haven't, yeah. and maybe that's something we need to focus on about next year. Yeah. Um, um, I, with golf, Jason Day was world no number one for a short period of time, told everyone he was the greatest, and then a week later he wasn't. No. Beaten by hubris? Maybe. I'll maybe. leave it up to you. Maybe. Golf's a tough sport to dominate at the sport. elite level. Uh, Nick Kyrgios on the way down, Bernie Tomic now maybe truly our, our elite intellect of men's tennis right now, which is a frightening it's very sport frightening. all on its own, but uh, all the best to you, Bernie. You. Great year if you're a sports fan from Cleveland, Ohio. Believe Land arrived. You know, this is a town that did not have a professional sports championship since uh, 1964. Browns uh, won the football championship before there was a Super Bowl. Um, the only other sporting championship in Cleveland prior to that was 1948, the Indians win the World Series. Um, this year we see the Cavs come back from 3-1 down with what is probably the block shot, the block of the century by LeBron James and, and just a three-pointer by Kyrie late to win game seven and take what should have just been a gift NBA Championship from a 72-9 and nine Golden State Warriors. We then see, at the same time, and, 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 and news known by less sports people, that would be fair to say, the Lake Erie Monsters. Never heard of They've them. now just changed their name to the Cleveland Monsters, by the way. Um, minor league hockey, hockey, ice hockey, have won the Calder Cup. Right. So they bring minor league hockey championship to Northeast Ohio. So that's all happening. It, it really is. And, and then you saw the boys of summer, the Indians, the tribe. In fact, it may be the last time we can even call them the tribe yeah. because there yeah, is enormous Indians. political correctness, which I think we're all thinking it's now time to, to maybe move away from that. Uh, just started going up, got into the playoffs. And my one fear was that we were going to end the World Series against the Chicago Cubs, a team that had not won 
a World Series mm -hmm. for a very long time. And uh, so we end up 3-1 up and losing seven. Game seven was just extraordinary. I mean, we were down. We hit a three-run home run in the eighth inning to tie it up. Um, emotions are everywhere here in Heart Health at the time. Those who are Clevelanders are clearly on the edge of their seats. Everybody else is just worried that if the Cleveland teams don't win, Stephen Jordan will kind of uh, implode. Uh, so, everybody, er, so everybody's got something cool. riding there, that's fair to say. And uh, we did lose in 10, but it was extraordinary. Uh, um, good year. Cleveland Browns, of course, trying to just kind of keep everybody balanced are 0 and 12 yeah. at this point in the NFL season. Thank you. And that's probably flattering to the way they play. They are truly an embarrassment to any sporting team. Indeed. Look, one last thing. Uh, given you're talking about American um, sport, an Australian chosen as the NBA number one draft, young Ben, the Philly 76ers. It's a big deal. Will he ever play? That's the big question. Does it matter? He'd be on a good contract. He would be on good money. Yeah. That would be fair to say. He could be on better money if he actually played. So uh, we'll look forward to anyway, but you know, lots of good Australian uh, sports men and women throughout the US collegiate system across a range of sports, and so uh, it is good to see them having success, which is good. Indeed. So anyway, um, hope you enjoyed that. Um, hope Nick enjoyed it. Uh, enjoy your weekend.